share some things from my life with you that perhaps will be a blessing to you. And I call it Encounters with God. And my first encounter with the Lord that I remember was about five years of age. And uh, my parents were visiting a Christian camp, I believe it was in Vermont. And they had a children's ministry there while the adults were in another area uh, doing their thing, having their worship or whatever. And uh, I remember they had puppets and skits and that type of thing that um, was attractive to children of my age. And uh, I remember there was a time, I think my dad had gone uh, back to New York and my mom and I were still there. And uh, I had a, a kind of a folding cot. And uh, of course my mom had her place and I think I was alone at home or in this uh, uh, cabin or room wherever we were. And uh, I was laying in the cot in the bed and I remember someone, a being, came into the room and just looked at me. Um, there were no words exchanged except I knew that this glowing person, entity, was... I believe it was in male form. It was, and um, like a a a man, he was uh, dressed in kind of a flowing white robe. And although I could uh, see him, yet the the clothing, the 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 there was scintillating, or there was a glow about him, an aura about him. And uh, although words were never expressed. Uh, I remember looking away and then and then looking back, and uh, this entity was still there. And I uh, I don't remember how it ended, but I do remember saying to myself this: that I will never ever uh, doubt that there is a God due to this heavenly encounter. I said nothing to anybody, but the, the, the reality, the, the depth, the, uh, the profundity of that encounter was so impacting on my life that yes, I never did doubt that there is a God. And uh, had I said something to somebody at the time, uh, I perhaps would have been uh, committed my life to the Lord at that time, because I certainly was open, but uh, uh, lacked some understanding. I said it was my first encounter, five years of age. That was about, um, I was born in 1941, so that must have been about 1946 or so. I remember it indeed was uh, summertime. My next encounter was uh, November 7th, 1959. I was a uh, freshman in uh, college. I was um, uh, on a path for physics and mathematics. And um, I was kind of like a tough guy. I mean, we belonged to a Bronx gang. We call ourselves a hundred and 190th Street Boys or something like that. And a church guy, a young guy, his name was Fred Mansky. He had this huge Nash automobile. It was like a, a turtle uh, in its uh, appearance, uh, in the sense that it had that curved shape. Uh, <clears throat> and it had this huge as I recall, straight six engine, a very powerful engine. And uh, 
he invited me to go see a, a movie. And the movie was being shown at Calvary Baptist Church in 57th Street in Manhattan. Somewhat uh, diagonally across the street from Carnegie Hall. And um, I accepted his invitation. And uh, as I recall, I had my black leather jacket, my jeans with my what we called garrison belt and my engineer boots. Uh, and my long red hair at the time was kind of combed back into what we call the DA. I won't tell you what the DA standard for stood for, but anyway, I recall uh, going to that church and we, we had a seat up in the balcony. As you came into the building, it was towards the left of the building and up on the balcony, so we had a good viewpoint of the screen and of the movie, and I remember the movie, and it was kind of like a grade B uh, Christian movie put together, and um, it was like every, everybody was happily ever after for everybody, you know, and I think there's a little love story entwined in there too. I didn't enjoy it, but I sat through it, <clears throat> and... Um, at the end of the movie, uh, a man came to the stage, and um, he, uh, he gave a short message, and he asked if anybody there uh, would like to receive Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, if they would simply raise their hand. Now, I was raised in a Christian home, and I knew what that meant, and... Um, I didn't raise my hand. I didn't raise anything except maybe my eyebrows. And so the speaker then, I think he outsmarted me. He said to the folks there, if anybody around you looks as though they may not be saved, in their terminology, to ask them to come down to the altar with you and bring them down to the altar. Well, you know, sitting behind me, someplace was uh, a thin uh, Bible school student, and he got up the courage to tap me on the shoulder and ask me if I would go down to that altar with him. Believe me, I have no idea what uh, made me respond positively, but um, I, I said, Yes. And um, as I recall, he kind of took me by the hand and uh, walked me down the stairs to the main level and then down the center aisle to the um, the uh, a gathering place for what we would call seekers today. And um, <clears throat> I still remember walking down and thinking all my friends up on the balcony looking down at me, and uh, and uh, I said to myself, what in the world am I doing here at this altar? Well, after they did whatever you're going to do at that altar, I assume they led us in what today we know as the sinner's prayer. <clears throat> and I still was wondering what I was doing up there. Then they took us to a side room. And they, I, I guess they assigned, or somehow, I sat next to a gentleman on some folding chairs, and he was to my right, and um, he opened his Bible in a way that we both could look at it, and I remember very clearly he opened up to the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 24. And it goes like this. Uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth on my word and believeth in him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And he explained it to me very simply. Now remember, I was in college at the time, and uh, I was uh, headed towards a, a double major in physics and mathematics. So I understood mathematics, simple arithmetic, 
and he presented it to me in this way, you know. He that heareth my word, and he asked me, he says, have you ever heard the words of Jesus Christ? And yes, you know, I'd been dragged to the church uh, and uh, fell asleep on the front pew of the church. So I certainly had heard the gospel message, I would say. So I said, yes. He says, okay. He says, um, and uh, do you believe in God who sent Jesus Christ? Well, I settled that issue when I was five years old. Yes, I believe in God who sent Jesus Christ. So here we got, he that heareth my word, number one, and believeth in him sent me, number two, has or equals everlasting life. Well, I'm going through my head. One plus one equals two. Uh, I I qualify for number one. I heard his word. And number two, I believe in God who sent Jesus. Then as a result of those two things, what? I have everlasting life for those two things? You know, it must have been the Holy Spirit because a light went on in my head. And in my innermost being, and at that moment, I knew that I had received eternal life. I, my life from that moment on was transformed simply by a man reading that verse to me and breaking it down into its uh, utter simplicity. One, he that heareth my word. Two, and believeth in him that sent me, the three equals, hath everlasting life. And then it goes on, shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. I tell you, I knew that I knew that I knew. And I I had an explosion of, of joy and peace. Uh, it's, it was incredible what that just understanding did for me. And uh, I, I knew I qualified. And uh, I knew I was accepted. And I knew I was loved. And I knew I was forgiven. And I knew then that I was on my way to heaven. Changed my life completely. Are you ready for number three? Number three, I'm glad you said yes. A visitation at Nonantham. What is Nonantham? It's the uh, it's the um, name of an American Indian Algonquin, um, meaning a terminology meaning blessing, and it was a tent village associated with the uh, pilgrim camp. And uh, by this time, I had devoted my life to Christ, and uh, I was the counselor for teenage boys, 15, 16 years of age, as I recall, and we were living together in this tent village. It had, uh, as I recall, six or eight, uh, maybe two, four-man tents, and then a large uh, tent in the center of this uh, semi-circular uh, village <clears throat> and that day I had we were out on the, the softball field and I had volunteered uh, or was conscript, conscripted to be the um, the umpire well you know it was a mistake I think because whatever call I made somebody was angry with me this team or that team my boys or the opposing team and uh, so that night after the game and so on, we were going back, and it was prayer meeting night. Well, it was getting dark, and we gathered in that big tent for prayer meeting, and I remember these kids, you know, with the uh, T-shirts and their cut-off jeans, and uh, you know how boys that age would look at a, at a boys' camp and so on, and... Um, I said, Lord, how, how, how are we going to start this prayer? They're angry with me and so on. And uh, we began to pray. 
and I have no idea, no recollection of how that started, but we began to pray with, uh, with increasing passion and with increasing sincerity. And I joined in. I remember uh, it was dark by now. I remember my wristwatch on my left hand. Uh, I, I, was, I was worshiping God. And the boys were, and uh, I remember the glow of my wristwatch um, um, going through the air as I raised my hands in worship and prayer, and um, it had changed from request kind of prayer to worship kind of prayer. And I realized it was a visitation of the Holy Spirit. I never experienced anything like it. We were all touched. We were all changed in some way, the boys and me. And um, yes, my sweaty teenage boys lasted for a long time. I think we were in that tent for two hours or more. It was unforgettable. It was that night, I believe I was filled with the Holy Spirit according to Acts 2.4 even though at that time I did not speak in tongues. Well, uh, I brought to this far. I have a couple more encounters with God in my lifetime, but uh, I'll close this session by saying the same God who I encountered as a boy at five and at 17, almost 18 years of age in that Baptist church and uh, the same God that we visited us in that tent village at Nonanta, still alive and uh, still available to you and to me. And thank God for that. Thanks for listening. And I'll be back. Bye.